Yeah. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Q-Tip. I got my girl Nat in here with me today. What's up? How are y'all today? Yeah, so Nat, for everybody that don't know you, you know what I'm saying, give us a little preview of who you are. Okay, so my name is Nat. Um, I am in college studying to be a psychologist right now. Um, I have a business. It's called Be Unapologetically You LLC. I know that's long. Everybody always try to tell me it's <laughs> long, but my brand is about being authentic and it's about being unique. So I like love the name. I just came up with it out of nowhere and I was like, okay, this is a goal that I want in life to be unapologetic and stuff like that. Right. So that's how I came up with the name and um pretty much the goal for that is to just to teach the youth about self-love and mental health and just to help them learn how to navigate life just a little bit better. So that's just a little bit about me, what I do, but we can get deeper into it. Yeah, let's 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 touch on this. So, you know, what draw what drove you to start that business? So, for me, I took my own experiences in life. So me growing up as a kid, I never really had anybody to teach me about mental health or to teach me about the struggles of just life in general, because no matter where you want to go in life or who you are, it's going to be hard, you know, and it's important for us to try to guide these kids and try to teach them mentally how to get through these struggles. And I never had that. So I feel like if I had somebody who was aware of mental health and what we should do and stuff like that, I feel like I would have been better off or I would have been able to do things more quickly in life and not learn the difficult way around, you know? Right. Yeah. So did you have to go through, did you find yourself going through a lot of um, struggles with with your mental health, um, you know, as a child? Yeah, because so I come from a single mom. So, you know, a lot of people out here can relate to just having a single mom who's working hard and you barely seeing her because she got to work three jobs Mm -hmm. just to keep everybody, you know, safe and for everybody to have a home and a roof over our heads and for us to go to school, you know. So when you come from that, of course, growing up, I didn't think like, oh, my life is this, my life is Mm -hmm. that. It never affected me until I got older and I actually got the mental understanding of of what life is about and what is like what we really have to do as far as working and trying to start a career trying to have a family you know mm-hmm. so when you're a kid you're kind of oblivious to all that so I wouldn't say that I struggled with mental health as a kid it started affecting me as an adult when I became like understanding of life right yeah right because you know as a child I, I think it it doesn't become we don't realize it until we see somebody else that's not in the same position as us. Right, right. You know, because we can most of our most nine times out of ten, at least at least it was it, it was this way for me mm-hmm. when I was growing up. Most of my friends, we all were in the same neighborhood. We yeah. all were in the same situation, single mom, family. So it was just normal to us. Right. But when we saw people outside of that, it was like, wow, you know, mm-hmm. this is possible. You guys are living like this, and then. Was it more of a, you know, like, dang, you know, my life sucked and nothing like that. Right. It was just like, okay, you know, I can achieve this too. You know what I'm saying? Right, I can true. work for it too. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, we touched on that in, in another episode about, um, you know, we talked about too how it's kind of different now. Mm-hmm. Kids are a little different now than with how we were raised. Because, right, most definitely. They live in a whole different world than right, we do. A right. different age than we do so it's just completely different and as parents you know congratulations thank i you, never see you. you in person to tell you but you. Um, same to you same I to know, you we parents. <laughs> we parents y'all but um <laughs> to raise your kids in this generation is nowhere near what it was like for our moms and our you know our dads to raise us because mm-hmm. they have different mental struggles due to things like social media right we got the beginning of it right. but they're really submerged into it now that's their life everything is just being on the phone being on the phone mm-hmm. so we have to try to raise our kids around it and help them to understand this phone thing that our parents didn't really have right. you know right and that's crazy because, like, um, you know, we touched on that. You, you know, like I said, we 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 kind of grew with social media because mm-hmm. I can remember, you know, I can remember having a little Nokia, little Not blue Nokia, <laughs> and they had the Nokia. 
<laughs> no, we didn't have apps. You know what I'm saying? The only right. game you could play was Snake. You know, I had the chocolate. You remember the chocolate? Yeah, I remember the Man. chocolate. <laughs> The razor, everybody yeah. thought they was something when the razor hit. Not the flip. We yeah. thought we was cool. What was it? The one with the keyboard? The, air, the black, the black bear. Bear, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All of that, man. But like I said, you know, we got on to it early, you know what I'm saying? I can remember, you know, not calling nobody before 9 o'clock. Right. You had to wait till no 9 minute. o'clock. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I used to, look, I ain't going to lie to you. I used to always get whoopings because, did we have a ride in? I don't know, but their cutoff time was 7 p.m. Well, yeah. <laughs> I'm on the phone before this, so my mom used to always be like, you using all the no, minutes. All the minutes like, yeah. <laughs> stop using my minutes. Right, so, right. Yeah, that's. That's a fun memory. That's, yeah, man. That's funny. Yeah, shout out to my sister too, man. Because I didn't have, like I said, I, I bought my little phone, my little Nokia from Walmart. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So not Walmart. I hit, I hit a miss. I might have had some minutes, so I might not have minutes. But shout out to my sister Sheena, man. I always use her phone. You know what I'm saying? You always use her phone. I always use her phone. She always let me use her phone, man. I love my sister to death. But um, like I was saying, to get back to the point. Mm-hmm. You know, we grew with social media. We got to see it evolve to what it is today. Right. But we also, I consider us, I consider us to be the, like the last generation to, you know, just play outside and play to actually be kids and enjoy right. it. You know what I'm saying? Because I feel like some of the stuff that comes with, you know, social media and, mm-hmm. you know, the evolution of the internet takes away takes a lot of innocence away from kids just being kids. Yeah, because they don't go outside. They too busy inside TikTok. Right. They too busy inside scrolling on Instagram. I see, like, young girls, 14, 15, you know, they're dressing certain ways. They listen to certain music. Like, when I was that age, we wasn't allowed to do all of that. And I'm not mm. saying that it's necessarily their fault right, or right, their right. parents' fault. I'm not blaming anybody. It's just the way that society has just progressed, you right. know. And we, as parents have to figure out how can we raise our kids around that because it's a different battle that they're fighting. Right, you know? right. And it could be harder for them, you know, uh, because like I said, with the increase in suicide in younger kids, right. increase in bullying and, you know, yeah. cyber bullying and all that stuff, you know, um, I can remember, you know what I'm saying, kids, you know, teasing, but where I come from, you know, you just had to learn how to join. You know what yeah, I'm saying? That, it, I you, never you had, had to. that, so... Earlier when you were saying like, okay, when we was talking about single mothers and stuff and you were saying, okay, I have all my friends, but we was in the same neighborhood and right. we, I never had that. I got taken from Alabama and dropped in a place where I don't know nobody. nobody. Right. So it was just me. And then I had two younger brothers, but you know, they're young. So it's just me. Right. So, you know, when you come from a place where you know everybody and then you come here you don't have that sense of community. You don't have, and right. if you from Jefferson and Athens, y'all know y'all is for your people. Yeah. And everybody <laughs> gonna ride for theirs. <laughs> so coming into something that's already so together, you already have mm-hmm. your friends, you've been knowing each other since kindergarten. That was a mental struggle that I had to deal with and go through bullying and stuff like that. And I actually appreciate it because it gives me insight on how to teach my daughter to get through that because we're all going to go through it. You can't right. allow it to just run your life or allow it to get you down because I did that for years. Years, I told myself, you know what? They call it imposter syndrome. I don't know if y'all ever heard of it, but imposter syndrome is pretty much where when you feel like, okay, I want to do something, but that voice in your head tells you, oh, you're not good enough or, right. oh, you're not able to do this and whatever. So that's what they call imposter syndrome. And I dealt with it for years just due to the fact of people bullying me and telling me I'm not this and I'm not that or, oh, you're not going to make it. You know what I'm saying? So when people are putting these values and instilling to people, which people should stop doing that. You're creating an environment but um, in someone mentally right. and you don't understand that what you do makes a mark on someone else's life and their mental health. So that's what got me into it. So now, like, even if my daughter experiences bully, the number one thing that she's always going to know is self-love. That's what I teach her every day as a baby. I put her in the mirror and say, tell yourself you love yourself. Tell yourself I'm pretty. Tell yourself this. A lot of women should do that for their daughters, their sons, everybody, so you can start it at a young age. So when they do encounter bullying, they have that ability to say, you know what? My mom told this, told me that this was going to happen, but I love myself because my mom taught me that as well. So you have to have balance and teach your kids. So how how did it make you how, how what was your if you can remember you know Ooh. <laughs> how 
take me back to like what was your what was your mind state like? How were you feeling when you when you when you experienced that culture shock? Because you going from you said you 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 were born and raised in Alabama, right? Yes. Oh my gosh. Okay. Culture shock. So where I'm from, all black people. Mm-hmm. You don't see a lot of white people or anything like that. All black. Kind of like Athens, if you really know the real Athens. Right. Okay. Right. So. But I got dropped in Jefferson. Mm -hmm. So if y'all know where Jefferson is, y'all know what's going on. So I have folks, they pulling up to schools with rebel flags on the back of their trucks. Mm -hmm. And because I'm ignorant and nobody ever taught me what that means, I'm just like, oh, look at these flags. They got these big flags on the back of their trucks. And then I'm getting older and I'm realizing what's going on. Mm -hmm. I'm like, wait a minute, what's going on? You know what I'm saying? So, um... It dropped me in a place where I had to learn how to adapt. It taught me how to speak a different language, how to understand a different language when it comes to being able to speak business. And um, it's just a great school system. And they really prepared me for a lot in life that honestly, a lot of black schools, they don't get that opportunity. So I'm thankful that I got dropped in Jefferson, but it was a lot of struggles. But that's anywhere you go. So Mm -hmm. I'm just thankful. I, I, you know, it was different. I wasn't used to just being in that environment and culture. But if I didn't have that, then I wouldn't be able to sit down with you and have this conversation and us get somewhere because I wouldn't know how to communicate and have the skills to be able to create this business, go to college and, you know, and do all these things because you have all these kids who are going to these majority black schools and they don't have the resources that Jefferson gave me. They don't have teachers that are going to be on you and tell you to do your work. They don't have that. If you fail, you fail. And then these kids are turning to the streets. They're turning to other different things because they don't have not only guidance from school, but from home either. And you can't blame them. Look at the society that we live in. Like, so. And, you know, I'm I'm glad you touched on the rebel flags because a lot of people, they're, they're, you know, they're kind of ignorant and they're blind from the fact because a lot of people that are not from Georgia, when they hear Georgia, they automatically think Atlanta. Right. You know, it is not that. It is not it's that. It's not that. Anything outside, if you're listening, anything outside of Atlanta <laughs> is, is, is totally different. It's not it's like that. It's not at like all. that at all. At all. At all. When you really start going in these small sundown towns, and if mm-hmm. you don't know what that means, I need you to Google it, okay? That's what's really going down. Mm-hmm. So, you know, use your internet, uh, you know. Yep. Be careful, man. You got to. Man. Look up sundown states. Mm-hmm. It's cities. It's, it'll shock you. It will. It will. And it's, it's like, you know, you could be in Atlanta. Oh, okay, cool. Everything's great. Come to Jefferson. (laughs) Come to Jefferson. Okay. I literally, I moved to Duluth, Gwinnett, three years ago. Mm -hmm. I don't experience racism until I come back to Jefferson. I can go in Kroger. I just went in Kroger the other day um, trying to get baby formula for my baby. And the racism I experience is like, it's different. It goes, it's. They're not expressive about it, but you could just tell, you could feel it in the air. Like people are staring at me and I'm like, whoa, like Mm -hmm. it really shows me what's going down here because in Gwinnett, we don't have that. Everybody's just together and you actually, there's more Asians than anybody up there Mm -hmm. in Duluth where I live. So when I come back home and I'm getting treated this way, I start realizing that a lot of the black people down here don't understand that. You know, that there's a lot of racism racism going on down here until you get out of it and see it from a different perspective. Mm -hmm. And I feel like, you know, a lot of people and um, a lot of black people are being pushed to stay where they are and they're not able to get where they need to be because of the government and just everything that they do to our people. Mm -hmm. So even with the rebel flags, like there is no way that that should have been okay. Right, right, right. But but you know, it, it's it represents Southern heritage, you know. It but what does that mean? Right. You tell me <laughs> what does that mean? You I tell can't me. tell you what that means because you know it doesn't it doesn't represent anything that is positive for right. me. Right. 
as a black man. And yeah. how does that affect you though when you see that? Because you're what born and raised down here, or right? So I'm from Elba County. You know, it's you know two shades. Uh, two shades different from Jefferson. You know, it may not be <laughs> yeah. as same, but it's different than a lot of Athens. And, you know, shout out to Athens, too, because Athens is a little bit more liberal due to the college being here, you know. Okay, okay. You may not, it's, it's not so much of an in-your-face racism as more, as much as it is. You may encounter some, you know, racism in different aspects, you know, right. maybe. You may not get employed because of your name or, you know, yeah, stuff like stuff that. Yeah, stuff like that, yeah. Right, so it's more systematic. It's not just blatantly, right, yeah. Right, it's Definitely a little bit more systematic. Um, but, you know, there are some good people. And, yeah. And, what, and that's what, good people on both sides, you know. Right. In, the, in, the, in small towns, too, there's some good people on both right. sides of it, you know what I'm saying? Not everybody is the same. Just want to make that, that clear. Right, uh, and but, social media is only going to show you that right. one side. Right. And it definitely got a little bit more prevalent you know with our last president you know a lot of people became a little bit more vocal um and, and they felt a little bit more free to mm-hmm. express you know what they were feeling or their beliefs and why do you think that is because we live in america you know they actually had the right to do yeah, so <laughs> yeah okay okay <laughs> you know yeah. they, they had the right to do so you right. know um so you know that's just the country we live in they they have those rights in place for them to express how they feel the, the uh, freedom of speech you know so because we have these platforms and because our kids have these platforms and stuff like that how do you think that these people being able to express themselves the way that you're saying is going to affect our kids because you don't you get a lot of different perspectives that way you right. get what i'm saying and it's different for kids because you know even when i think back as a child you know, I listened to my mom, but my mom wasn't my main influencer. You know? Right. I had, I list, I had my mom. I yeah. Had my friends. Yeah. People that were my friends. I know. Mm-hmm. Celebrities. You know, uh, people from church, people from work. You know, you just, you know, they they talk about they talk about you know as a child, as a young child, you're in a state of hypnosis, mm-hmm. and you just soak in information, um, and that's how you get programmed. So okay. you know, you just learn, you soak in information, and then when you transition from that stage you kind of just learn you know how the world works right and you learn yourself uh, but like i said as, as an early child you just really get programmed right you're not really the aware. whole school system is the program because right. how you learn about the same thing in 12th grade that you learn in kindergarten and christopher columbus that within itself just doesn't make sense We've been learning the same knowledge repeatedly. But, oh, since they're in 10th grade, we're going to give them just a little bit more. Mm-hmm. And then they're not even teaching you all of a hi- the history. Right. They teaching you what they want to teach you. Right. And then a lot of people, they don't use the resources that we now all have mm-hmm. where you can actually look up your history and really start understanding who we are and where we really come from. Right. And I, and I do think, and I do think, that is the positive of social media right now. Right. Because I have seen a lot of people, you know, um, sharing our history. Right. The truth right. about our people, the truth about what has happened in America. And I do think that our ki- that our kids will benefit from that. But I also think it's going to give them some identity crisis because we still, as a people, face identity crisis because do we really know who we are? Right. You know, we go way beyond just slavery. Yeah. But it seems like everything starts with slavery, but it doesn't. We didn't just, we weren't just born and were slaves. We were slaves, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, and that's the thing, like, a lot of people, they don't think past that because right. that's where they teach you at. Okay, mm-hmm. y'all black and you were slaves. Right. And they don't tell you that really your ancestors was queens and kings. Right. Like, and you come from riches and glory and may not be riches with money, just riches in spirit mm-hmm. and riches mentality and just different things. You don't have to be rich in money to be rich. You know what I'm saying? Right. And if you know what I'm saying, you know what I'm saying. Right. But our people come from greater things than what they strip from us. So it's important for people like me and for people like you to really spread the knowledge and let people know like you did not come from slavery they teach you that you came from slavery to keep you stuck in a mentality and a lot of our people are not able to break free because the system is hard to really break free from Mm -hmm. you have to 
be strong, not only mentally and spiritually. It's coming from everywhere, you know? So I don't I don't blame my people for being where they are. And a lot of people, they're happy at where they are. I'm not saying like, okay, just because you don't recognize this, that you're not happy and your life is no. Mm-hmm. You don't know that. I'm not here to judge anybody, but I want better for my people. I want people to get the knowledge so they can open up these accounts and stuff like did you know that if you open up an IRA account for your kid and start right now, we got, well, how old is your baby? Maybe two in November. Okay, well, I'm about to be at a year. If you start right now and you invest $20 a month, by the time he turns 25, he'll have $100,000 that he can pull out right there. They don't teach you that. Mm-hmm. Why do you think the rich stay rich? Because they have the knowledge. And right. because the system is putting this stuff in our mind, the celebrities, the distractions, we can't gain that wealth knowledge. Mm-hmm. So my goal with my business and stuff like that is to spread that. Because that's something simple. $20 a month can get you anything. Yep. If you smoke, yep. it can get you anything. <laughs> yep. Okay? Yep. Like, come on. <laughs> so... Little things like that that we're not taught. A lot of people don't know what an IRA account is. I just found out a couple of years ago. Right. And then, you know, too, I, I kind of struggle with trying to figure out if it's do our people want to know it or do they not want to know it? Or mm-hmm. is it that we're just struggling so much that we can't afford it? They can't it afford. There. Look, if. I'll give you Athens, for example, because I've been lived here for a long time. They give you these warehouses out here that pays you just enough money to keep you in Athens, but not save enough money to get out of here. You get what I'm saying? And a lot of people are trapped because that's how they design the system Mm -hmm. to keep them here. Not saying they want to be here, but, you know, (laughs) take your time. (laughs) That's what we're here for. <laughs> Take your time. <laughs> Look, I got ADHD. I didn't lost the thought. So you're gonna have to <laughs> you gonna have to start somewhere else. Go but ahead. I can feel that though. You know, uh, I can feel that. You know, because I think I saw somewhere, and I I hate to lie, uh, but I saw somewhere where it was saying that the cost of living has changed. You know. Hundred times, <laughs> like a hundred times, honey. I was looking at houses on Zillow. Yeah, it's ridiculous. You look at the rent price from just 2016 to where we are right now. You mm-hmm. got twelve. They it was eleven hundred, twelve hundred dollars for a three bedroom. That's going for almost two grand. Yep, yep. And it's crazy. I I can remember when I first moved to Athens for the first time because I moved to Athens, then I moved to Atlanta. But my first time moving to Athens. I had a two bedroom, one bathroom duplex. Okay, duplex. For, for five hundred dollars. You ain't had no duplex for five hundred dollars. Well, I'm sorry. Five thirty five. Five thirty five. So it was five thirty five. That same duplex. That same duplex in it's, the same area with the same carpet that I had. Same towel. The same Not the same towel. You said it. <laughs> The same everything. <laughs> Not damn replace the is time. going for twelve hundred dollars today. What? That's more than fifty percent increase. That's more than a fifty percent increase right there. That twelve hundred dollars, and it's crazy. That's ridiculous. And I mean, it, and it's going on in 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 other places. You know, right? I read an article the other day that um, you know, that this company from Florida they came out and they bought over. You know, I'm just putting a number out there. They bought over 300 um, houses, mm-hmm. and they're, you know, they're they're taking those houses, and they're they're not going to accept Section Eight, so it's going to displace a lot of people, a lot of families. Right. But I'm torn because, you know, as a business owner myself, mm-hmm. and as someone that you know is looking into going into the real estate, I'm going into. I'm going to speak it into existence. I'm going Always. into the real estate. I understand it because. You know, you take you take you take a property that's at its lowest value. Mm-hmm. You add value to the property, and then you rent it out. You get the rents at a good rate, and then you resell it. That's how you make your profit. Yeah, I'm torn because it's gonna hurt your own people, right? But at the same time, I'm kind of disappointed in my people. At the same time, I'm disappointed. I'm not disappointed because I understand, but I'm disappointed because. 
at some point we have to seek ownership. We can't they get have comfortable. The re- and that's the thing. Right. You okay, I'ma just say this, and this is my opinion, okay? Nobody else has to agree. But we as a black community as a whole, you cannot sit here and say, Oh, I can't make it because I don't have the resources or they did this to us for whatever. At this point, everything is on Google. There's there's no excuse. A lot of people are just lazy. They don't they see how much it takes. You're a business owner. How much does it take? Really? Not only physically putting the money into it, but how much does it take mentally when you're sitting there trying to bring this in fruitation and it's not working? Mm -hmm. It's not coming together. You have these ideas, but you don't it's not coming. They don't talk about that. It's hard, but we still have resources. It's easy to open open an LLC. $135. They went up. It was $100. They went up. (laughs) Oh, well. (laughs) I got it when it was $135. Look, they may be going up. The rent going up. (laughs) Milk going up. Bread going up. Everything. LLC going up. Oh, since we own LLCs, if you do get an LLC... Please trademark your name. Mm-hmm. Trademark it. It's, I'm not gonna lie. It's like 350. That's really not a lot in the business world, but it's 350, and it is important investment. People will steal your ideas. They will steal your content. Get your name. 135, and then 350. That's almost 500 dollars. Six. I don't know. I can't do the math. I've been drinking, but you get it. Yeah, you'll make it back. Yeah, you make it it's a it's a great investment. Invest in yourself. That's right. you know a lot of people, <clears throat> and I use my own testimony. I don't come places and talk to people and try to put people down and say, "Oh, you're doing this." Right. No, I use me. So invest in yourself. I spent so much investing in relationships, mm-hmm. and investing in family, investing in friends, helping people, other people, as my friend would say build their cocoons Mm -hmm. and then i'm investing in all these other things and it took me until i'm 27 years old to start investing in myself right right so investing yourself right and and going through that you know going through that that can that can take a toll on a person right to keep investing because the more you invest the less that you can put in yourself right and then it's like okay so for me personally you invest in all these people and you give all these people your all, but you know, the world and the way it runs, it's going to take, 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 take when you give, 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 and you mm-hmm. don't have boundaries. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So that was my life and what I went through. And as I grew older, I had to learn how to have boundaries because it's okay to give, but you know, you can't allow everybody to take everything and you're not giving yourself nothing. Mm-hmm. You're not, you have these, me, I have big ideas and I have big dreams, but Anybody can have big ideas and big dreams. If you don't act on it, then you don't have anything. You just have a dream, and that's just a thought. And a dream going to keep going. You can go from 25 to 35 real quick with a dream. Mm -hmm. And you didn't move because of whatever reason. Yep, every time. And and I'm glad you you touched on earlier that, you know, some people are, they're okay. They're comfortable with where they are. Right. And that's that's totally fine. Yeah. It's okay to be comfortable if that's the life you want to live. That's fine. We're not, you know, I don't down anybody for living the life they want to no. live. No. Happiness it, doesn't come. Everybody's happiness comes from different things. It comes right. from internalness. If you want to live in a ranch on a farm with you and your kids and your husband and y'all got farm animals and y'all happy, then do that. Will yeah. I do it? No. But still, <laughs> if that what makes you happy, like... Do what makes you happy. That's the key. Like, right. find what makes you happy. Right. Find what makes you happy and find a way to, you know, make profit off of it. Because that's the only way. You and, and, and that's what I found out as a business owner. I can't do something that doesn't make me happy. You know right. what I'm saying? If, if it doesn't make me happy or if I feel miserable doing it, then it's not going to last long. I'm it's not. not. Gonna, I'm not going to put 100% into it. And it's not going to, you know reach its full potential. Honestly. And it's not because, trust me, when you find what makes you happy and you start understanding what your purpose is, you'll get Q selfie place. Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? Right. You'll get be on the project with ULC because you want to work for it. You want to strive for it. My advice to people out here is, one, 
we have to become more self-aware. Mm -hmm. And to become self-aware starts with self-accountability. And a lot of people lack that, you know, becoming self-aware is the key to your success because then you are able to put yourself in the mirror and talk to yourself and understand your struggles internally and flip that into positivity because we all got toxic traits. Right. Nobody's perfect. I'm mm -hmm. not going to sit here and say I'm perfect. I could be toxic just as me, but every day we have a choice. Right. You know, so become self-aware so you can start understanding what you do like, what you don't like. And when you start realizing the things that you like, you can create businesses and you'll love doing it. You know, going to school is a side hustle for me. I'm studying to be a psychologist because I want to just make random money on the beach in Dubai. And I open my computer and talk to somebody for 45 minutes and say, yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I'm going to be genuine. I'm going to help you and I'm going to give you my all. But when I close my computer, I'm going to pick up a little mimosa on the beach and drink it. Right, right. And Enjoy life. Enjoy my life. Like, I want to help people. I want to help kids. I want to help my people get to where they want to be. I'm, you know, I'm working on opening a youth foundation. That's going to help, you know, these kids understand financial literacy at a young age. You got the Boys and Girls Club. You got the YMCA. But are they really doing what's necessary for kids? Or are they taking black people's money and just putting their kids in the area? And I say that because I've been up close. I've worked at the YMCA. So I know what's going on. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So we do need a more authentic place for our kids to go to learn about credit. If they would have taught me about credit in high school, do you know where I would be? Dangerous. <laughs> Dangerous. What, my first credit card, I'm like, ooh, I got money, shoes, clothes. I swiped it until it could swipe no more. The <laughs> <laughs> Swipe the, the card bill, off. Look, what? <laughs> the bill is up there until it stopped. And they were like, oh, you can't use it no more. Okay, cool, whatever. I got everything I wanted. Mm -hmm. What? You come years later, you trying to get something. They're like, oh, yeah. yeah, you owe $900 from when you was 18. You was swiping that car. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, what do you mean? I don't have any money. I'm broke. Mm-hmm. Now your credit score going to four hundred dollars, yep. like not four hundred dollars, but four hundred. You get what I'm saying? Right, right, yeah. Right. And and you know we don't learn about that. And I think I do think that you know financial literacy is one of the biggest handicap that was placed on our people. Mm -hmm. um, you know because you know for generations, all we've known is struggle, right? Like survival by any means necessary. Right. We haven't been in a place to where, okay, let me try to do this or let me try to do that. Let me try to invest in this. Let me try to invest in that. It's more of, all right, so we're going to do this to pay these bills and I'm going right. to go work this job so I can pay these pay other bills. Pay these other bills. Right. You know, and it's hard. And I, but Because they don't put it, financial literacy in their face. Right, right, right. And, I, and again, I do think that our kids – will benefit from that because I feel like our generation is doing a better job, not doing a better job, but we are more so gravitating towards entrepreneurship. Right. I know a lot of people, you know, around my age, older and younger that are entrepreneurs. Right. And they're working for themselves a lot more than, you know, we come, I come from, my mom come from the generation to where you work, you know, you stay on that job for 10 years, 15, <laughs> 20, you put in your time put and you your retire. Time and you retire. Ooh. Right. Because, but that's, that's what, and you know, you know, um, too, I saw where, um, you know, the big, con um, the big conversation that went on either last week or week before was the whole idea of counseling student loans. Mm -hmm. And it Ooh, was, that's a big one. And it was it was, but it was troubling to me because people were saying, "Oh, they shouldn't cancel student loans." Uh, you know, people have been paying off their loans. They should just, you know, so, get over it, and they need to cancel medical debt before they cancel student loans. And for me, it was like, okay, so, and I always say this. I always say this. It's two things I always say. You know, up until the up until you you're 18, that's mm -hmm. when you become an adult, right? Right. So for me, I'm 30 years old. Okay. So that means I've been an adult for 12 years. Right. That's nothing. <laughs> so you take you 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 telling me that 
you have a child, right? Mm -hmm. That child has been raised. We were raised in a in a culture, in an environment to where education is important. The only way you can be successful is if you do what? Go, Go to, to school. College. And how, that's what traps so many people. Right. But how can you tell a person that has been raised since what we used to all go to school at five, six, five? Yeah. You've been since since you were five years old until you were 18, 13 years. You've been told that the only way to be successful is if you go to college. And you go to college and it flunk out. Right. College doesn't work out for you. You know what I'm saying? How can we be mad at those individuals and tell them that, oh, you you had a choice, you know what I'm saying? Or you need to pay your student loan. A, no, a lot of people you can't. But we ha we we may have had a choice, but if all that's all I've been taught, that's all I know. They until I know different. Because they don't teach you the other ways of financial freedom. Correct. School is not the only way of going to financial freedom. Business owners, entrepreneurship, which is where we're at now. Mm -hmm. But like you said, they've been drilling this into us as kids. Go to school, go to school. Mm -hmm. My mom, be a doctor. Go be a good job. I never wanted to be a doctor, but my mom is saying, be a doctor because mm -hmm. you Lord. need money. <laughs> you need this money. And I'm like, dang, I don't want to be a doctor. So you know what that did to me? My mom saying, be a doctor, be a doctor. Guess what? I get to college. I'm studying to be a pediatrician. I had a C in biology in high school. What was I thinking? Like, come on now. I didn't flunk. Like, I'm flunking out. Right, right. Because, you know, go to school, go to school, go to school. Mm -hmm. And not go to school for what you want to do, but go to school to get a good job. Right. And I meet right. a lot of people whose parents put that pressure on them to just go to school to get a jo good job. They're not asking their kids, hey, what do you want to do? Mm-hmm. Who do you want to be? It's more of, okay, this is what you should do because, listen, you got to have this and you got to have that. But you're stripping away kids' ability to become creative and create businesses, which, thank God, we have social media because now, like you said, our kids are able to see that. Mm -hmm. So they can see it from a different perspective and it's not as, you know, closed-minded around it. Because right. now you can see somebody selling shoes and mm -hmm. making a million dollars just by painting on them. Mm -hmm. Selling hair, making a million dollars. What you know, lashes? Making what we doing right now? Doing YouTube videos. Doing nothing. <laughs> Talking. Easy. <laughs> and it's crazy. And 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 I'm trying to figure out, you know, what caused that shift in society because I can remember people you know talking to the, the you know the, the past generation, the older generation of people they came out, they could come out of high school with some license or certificates or, you know what I'm saying? They could come out of high school with a licensed plumber. Right. A licensed electrician. You right, know, right. They had those trades to where we had, we had carpentry in school. We, in Elberton, we had, we had granite because that's, you know, that's what we're known for. Grant, we're the granite capital of the world. Really? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Facts. Elberton? Facts. Anytime okay. you see, anytime you see, when you die, you gonna you gonna see Elberton what? on your tombstone, you know, just about every tombstone, you know. I ain't gonna say every every tombstone. The majority come from Elberton. That's what we're known for, granted. So you not know. Elberton, okay. But yeah, so that's a trade. <laughs> that's a trade that you can learn in high school. You can right. learn that trade in high that's school. That's cool though. We had um, I'm not, I'm not sure they still do it or not. I'm pretty sure they do, but I'm not sure. <clears throat> um, and we had we had carpentry. Mm -hmm. That was it. Uh, we didn't have a class where you can, you know, come out as an auto, uh, you know, an auto mechanic, mm -mm. a plumber, an electrician. But they had that stuff, you know, in the For 80s. Real? Yeah, I the never knew that. 70s, 80s. You could come out of high school as a, because I, I talked to, like I said, I got a guy got my job that I talked to a lot, man. Mm -hmm. Shout out to Mr. Davenport. Um, and we talk all the time about stuff like that. And, you know, he was saying, you know, he went to, he's from Athens. He went to the University of Georgia and graduated from there. Okay, And he cool. was saying that, you know, it was guys that, when he came out of high school, it was guys that were making way more money than he was uh, coming out of college because they had those trades that they learned mm. in high school. And I, and even, um, I even read something the other day, man, to where they had a town, it actually was a black community in Athens, 
Mm-hmm. Called, I think it was Linen Town or something okay, like that. Okay, I'm gonna look that Linen Town. Linen Town. I, okay. I may I may be saying you know how it to wrong. Spell it? I do not. I may okay. be saying it wrong. <laughs> Forgive me if I am. Linen Town. But it was a town that was <clears throat> um that was, you know, a, a predominant black community. And um this town had had carpentry, carpenters, plumbers, electricians. And so what they would do, they would build each other help build each other's houses. So you know, if you needed you needed some, you know, need some foundation, they had right. they gonna you help come each through. other, yeah. Right, you need your plumbing straight, they mm-hmm. come through with the plumbing, and then at that point you had your house. Is this a well known thing? Like, it's so it's gone. You know, what I'm oh, saying UJ okay. bought the property and they, you know, they destroyed and they built some dorms over it, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but stuff like that and you know and it's happened all over the world you look, right. you look at you know you look at Lake Lanier yeah used to be, used to be a predominant black um, community you look at places in you know like Tulsa uh, Oklahoma mm-hmm. uh, you know it's just all over you look at places Charlotte Charlotte happened to be one of those places where the actual uh, stadium is now that used to be a predominant black uh, neighborhood in Charlotte but you look at those places to where you know at those times we had communities um, that we could go and we could see people being successful. Right. Um, but what happened to these communities? Right. Where are they at today? Right. And right. why don't we have these communities today? Right. Why is everyone so divided? Right. What is the real issue? Right. What happened? That's the question. What, what is happened? the issue? Why do, do we have to compete? Right. Why can't we spread knowledge among one another and help each other get to the next level it's not that oh i don't want to teach you because i don't want you to do better than me it's not about that it's about helping each other to grow so we can both do good for each other and for our people like and it's crazy but it's it's a lot of we have faced a lot of challenges i can remember seeing um you know like i said shout out to tiktok I can remember seeing a TikTok, you know, this guy, he does like some, you know, little three minute educational videos and he made the point to where people, um, I think in like the early seventies, you could be a factory, you know, you could work in a factory and right. you could actually provide for your family. Right. Ford, and actually retire. Right. Ford, Ford was paying enough to where, you know, they give you a car mm-hmm. and you make enough money to, you know, uh, buy your house, send your kids out to school. And then I think it was Nixon. Nixon signed a trade deal with China, and that drove a lot of the factories out of our country. Mm. And at that point, a lot of black people, we were factory workers. You know, a lot of people were working in factories, not just black people. You know, everybody was pretty much working in factories because that was our money making machine right. at that point in time. But when the factories left, a lot of people didn't know what to do for money. Mm-hmm. And so that's how a lot of people turned to you know some illegal activity right that was the alternative at the time and i think that's where you know we lost a lot of people right uh, because you know don't 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 get me wrong you got to have good businesses to you know dev- <laughs> yeah. to dabble in illegal activity you, you do know, you, you can't just be a dummy you know what i'm saying Doing make illegal a things. Right. it just don't work that way right so you know you take away those people who could have been, you know, great entrepreneurs. Right. And, you know, we got. And that is entrepreneurship. It is. Okay. It let's is. let's it not is. get not, that. Right. Just because it's illegal don't mean having a bit. That is a business right. to create clientele and keep mm-hmm. serving your clientele and going where you need to go to get right. it done. That is a business. That right. is entrepreneurship. Right. That's why they can go in California and make millions off mm-hmm. of it. Why you sitting here making what? Thousands? Right. Like. Right, which is also another problem that, you know, people are still in jail. And I think that was the main issue that people were having with the whole Britney Griner situation. Yeah. Because, you know, people are politicking for her to be released, which she should be released. I feel like she's just being a prisoner of war at this point. Right. For lack of better terms. Uh, But she, a lot of people are, are locked up in America today for the same thing. And they making millions right, off, off of, of it. what they locked up for. Right. And that's crazy, but we all know that they use um the system in order to do that already. It's something, uh, I cannot think of the name of it. But once I get the name, I'ma say it. 
did you know that it's like a program and I'm, the name is going to come to me, but they use this program to calculate how many. I think it's called the school to prison system. Mm. Something like that. If you type that in Google, something going to come up and you're going to realize what it is. But they use this system in order to count things of how many black kids get in trouble, how many black kids do this and that and a third. And they use that system to learn how many jails they need to create in the wow. future. Look at that. Okay. Uh, I hate that it slipped my mind because we've been drinking this wine. But right, right, right. still, the school to prison system, somebody taught me this like a year ago. Mm. And they were like, do you know what this is? And I'm like, no. And when I looked it up, it blew my mind because I'm like, wow, this is public knowledge. It's on any website, government websites, and they tell you that they do it, you know? So, yes, the school to prison pipeline. Yes, that's what it is. Look it up. Wow. That's crazy. I know I saw um, I saw where some, uh, some, some university was doing a study. Mm-hmm. And um, they were studying four pre-K kids, pre-K students. Uh, it was a black guy, it was a black boy, a white boy, mm-hmm. a black girl, and a white girl. Mm-hmm. And they were, the university pitched it as they want teachers to watch the kids to see who would act up first or who would misbehave. Oh, I think I've seen this on Facebook or something. Yeah. yeah. But the actual test studied the teachers and they used eye tracking software to see who they were actually watching. Mm. And the majority, I think it said every, it was either the majority or, you know, 100% watched the little black boy <laughs> and they were waiting on him to misbehave. Oh my uh, but nobody the 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 turn the the crazy part about the situation was nobody misbehaved at all. Um, they all just they played. were just trying to create a study. Right, they were just trying see. To I seen a study. the video, but I never actually clicked on it. Right, it was like old. Mm-hmm. It looked old or something. It, like it that. was. And it I was, was like interesting. Old stuff was always interesting. <laughs> yeah, but so what was the conclusion of to? What did they say the conclusion was? So they they went on to show how society kind of watches the behavior of the male and how males always end up not feeling as welcomed in the school environment Mm -hmm. and how they ended up, you know, quitting or dropping out and how that always led to them going to prison. Mm. And how they ended up getting stuck in the system, right? Um, and so it just it was just kind of it was just kind of you know creating awareness, right? Is what right, I would say, right, right, right. Because yeah. why is that your you know it's creating awareness and mm-hmm. just letting people know like hey this is a thing and this is one of the reasons why our kids are ending up where they're ending up, right? You know, we can't be oblivious to those things. We have to pay attention to those type of things and understand, like, what is happening to our kids and why are they straying Mm -hmm. this way? Right. And what can we do to, you know, motivate them to finish school or, you know. Yeah, go to to college. I'm not saying you got to go to college to be successful. You actually don't. Like, don't. Unless you know who you want to be and what you want to do in life, mm-hmm. don't go into college until you learn those things because you will end up on a lot of money and a lot of different things just because you just weren't sure. And it's okay mm-hmm. not to know. Right. Don't force yourself to go to school out of high school because that's the pressure. A lot of black mm-hmm. parents tell their kids, look, at 18, you got either this choice or this choice. You're mm-hmm. either going to go to school or you're going to move out. Mm-hmm. And that's what you're going to do. I don't know what else you thought you was going to mm-hmm. do. So you're pressuring your kids and you're putting this weight on their shoulders like, dang, at 18, who has the mental capacity at 18 to know who they want to be and what they right. want to do in life? Right. Nobody. I'm 27. And yes, I have an idea now, but 18? Mm-hmm. You're not even exposed. You know, depending on what environment you grow up in, you may not even be exposed to the different fields or the different paths that you could even take. Right. I mean, you may, you know, come from a small neighborhood. I may have only been exposed to teachers, coaches, 
and factory workers. And exposed to what they (laughs) want you to be exposed to because you were living in a small town. They control the education system. They control what we learn. Mm -hmm. You know, they control all of that. Mm -hmm. So you may not even get, you know, and that's, that's one thing I do love about Atlanta because when I, when I did go to Atlanta, I got to see black success at its finest. Right. I got to see black people doing a lot of things and I, and, What's crazy is, you know, when I moved back to Athens mm-hmm. and I got to, you know, see some of the people in like the school system, like the the school system here is, is full of black people in high positions. You know, it's a lot right. of black people in Athens in high positions that I didn't even get to see in my town is 45 minutes away from Athens, 30 right. minutes away from Athens. And it wasn't like that. And Definitely so. Definitely not like that in Georgia. Just being exposed to okay man you know black excellence right right the only black excellence that these school schools and stuff are teaching our kids is to be football players yep. basketball players go to the nba mm-hmm. or sell drugs right that's right. all they're putting in front of them so they don't know that, that you can go be an astronaut mm-hmm. they don't know that you could be a entrepreneur like us mm-hmm. they don't know that you could do anything just by being authentic right they don't know that because they have these pressures and limitations placed onto them before they even get a chance to take off. It's already there. It's the system. It's systematic. So how do we help our kids? Mm-hmm. Yep. But like I said, we got a challenge, you know. <laughs> but it's it, a challenge. It's doable. It is. It's doable. And I do think we have a lot of more. We have a lot more resources at our fingertips than you know we did growing up. You know, right. and even the generation before us, you know, it's it's if you know college is your destination, it's a lot easier to go to college, and it's a lot more opportunity uh, for you to see different colleges, and you know, right. not just you know, okay, I only the only college I go to is UJ. If I'm getting to UJ, then you nothing know, else. And no, nothing else. Nothing else. It's you know? everywhere, yeah. Because even even with me growing up. I wasn't really exposed to a lot of HBCUs, and I really feel like I should have went to an HBCU. I never knew about that until, like, college. Mm-hmm. I told you I went to high school. Jefferson High School. Look it up, everybody. Right. Like, I never knew what an HBCU was. Like, right. that's crazy. How would I never know what that is? And then I get into college, and I'm seeing all this HBCUs, but I didn't already flunked out because right, I'm right. going to school to be a doctor. <laughs> like <laughs> Something that I really didn't want to do. I was just... You know, doing what somebody else wanted me to do, you know, um, and and like I said, it's it's hard, it's hard being a child, cause at eighteen, you know, believe it or not, no matter what the law said, you still, still a child. child. <laughs> you still a child. You You're know? still a child because the mental struggles and the mental battles that you have to deal with when you really reach adulthood, eighteen is not as not saying that for everybody because some people do right. grow up that young. I'm mm-hmm. not going to put that stipulation on everybody, but right. the majority of us don't grow up that young. Mm-hmm. We're fortunate enough to not have to grow up that and young. And you shouldn't want to. We all grew up saying, oh, I can't wait to grow up. I can't wait till I do this. I <laughs> can't wait till I... How. <laughs> do not rush it. Spend time loving yourselves and understanding who you are first. Live your life. Go to the parties. Go mm-hmm. have fun. Like, do these things because when you, for me, okay, I did all that. Everybody know downtown Athens and how it is. I right. did all that going to Jefferson. So when I when I did become older and I became a mom, I didn't feel like I was missing anything. Right. I didn't feel like, oh, I didn't live my life. I don't, I feel like more people should focus on living their lives and stop focusing on things like relationships Mm -hmm. and you know things that distract you like drugs cars money focus on yourself and becoming self-aware like we said earlier Mm -hmm. so you can get to where you need to be in life so you're not in college flunking out if somebody would have taught me growing up hey nat love yourself figure out what you want to do in life who you want to become, and they're instilling these things into me as a kid. When I would have turned 18, I probably would have knew what I wanted to do, and I would have never flunked out of college. Mm-hmm. So 
so it starts with us as parents too. It's not all on the kids because we are aware and we know what the system is not only doing to us, but our people. Mm -hmm. Now as parents, we have to step up and try to bring our kids through it and teach them how to get through it and for them to become aware. So they're not trapped. If you know what the system is doing to your people, what are you going to do? Right. Well, you got to do something. If not, you'll come a product of your environment. So you have to definitely do something. But like I said, you know, I think we got some great tools at our fingertip. I think we're in a position to change the narrative going forward. Yeah. Um, I think our generation is very creative. Um, you're gonna know. change some stuff. Right. You're gonna change some stuff. And the generation, and you know, we always, you know, everything gets better with time, you know. Right. So, you know, we have we had a lot more, you know, opportunities than the people that came before us. And our kids are gonna have a lot more opportunities than we had. And they're already breaking the mental chain. Mm-hmm. They already know that they don't want to work at McDonald's for ten dollars an right. hour because they can sell shoes on Instagram right. and be a millionaire. Right. So they're already really doing it for us. Mm-hmm. We just have to recognize it and push them to do it. Our lives are already set because our people or the generation before us, they set it for us. Mm-hmm. We live in it from their mistakes. Right. So as us, we still young, you 30, I'm 27. We have time to create it and, and spread that awareness. And that's what you're doing on your podcast. And I love it. You're spreading awareness on different situations and different backgrounds and people. And that's something that's needed. So I see nothing but love and blessings. Like, I'm so give. happy for you. That's what we give, man. I yeah, appreciate it. And, and you're likewise, doing it. Likewise. You know, um, and, and we touched on, you know, I've actually touched on mental health. Um, and all of our conversation, yeah, because I, you know, for especially from for you know men, black men especially, Oof. it's a topic that we overlook a lot, you mm-hmm. know, uh, because you know, let's just face it, it's just something that's frowned upon in, in some instances, and it shouldn't be, and y'all right. should not. This is one thing. This is my opinion. Y'all should not be pressured the way that y'all are to become what y'all need to become to sustain a family and mm-hmm. i can't really speak on it because i'm not a man but i have a lot of guy friends and the pressures of being a man within itself is already hard because mm-hmm. y'all are naturally before you even born held to a standard of you have to do this it does not matter mm-hmm. so when you're telling your sons this and you're doing that you're not allowing them to express their feelings and then we get what you were saying right Right. And then, like you said, too, you know, um, and I think a comedian said, and and rest in peace, I don't remember, I don't remember the guy's name, but he died. T.I. Shot Lamar, he said he passed away. Mm. But, you know, he said, you know, you know, I come from a generation of men that were raised by women. Mm -hmm. And, you know, what does a generation raised by women create? A bunch of sassy niggas. (laughs) (laughs) And that's facts, you know? Yeah, because these... Listen, I'm a single mom, y'all, and I'm back in the dating realm or whatever. These men are lazy. (laughs) They don't want to work. They don't want to get a job. They want to find a woman who's just going to take care of them. (laughs) And just, all right, baby, listen, you going to go to work, but I need the car. So I'm going to drop you off. And yes, baby, I'm going to be at home. But, you know, yeah, like, come on now. We need, we need more. And all jokes aside, (laughs) we do need more men to become present in their son's lives Mm -hmm. because women cannot teach men how to be a man because they're not men. We're women. We can try, but it's not our job. And it shouldn't be up to all these single black women to try to mold these men. And then we're wondering, oh, why is this happening? Why are black men doing this? Because they don't have the guidance. Mm -hmm. Men would rather drop something off in a woman and have a baby and skate off. But nobody talks about the mental struggles of being a single mother. If people knew what it's like to really be a single mom, you wouldn't want anybody to be a single mom. Mm-hmm. Yes, a lot of us single moms, we have help. I have help. My kid's father gets her every weekend, but I still face mental struggles every day. 
I still face financial struggles because I'm doing it by myself, even though he is there to help me. So a lot of men to, need to become aware and stop just having these kids and creating these burdens and struggles on these black women. And now we're here to pick up your pieces and try to build a man while we're broken ourselves. Right. Like it don't work like that. Where's the healing? Where's the love? Where's this? Where's all of this? And then as black women, you know, we're already held to the standard of being the strong person and the person who's supposed to uplift everybody. But who's uplifting us if our black men are doing what they're doing? Mm -hmm. And no, I am not here to blast black men, black men because that's what they always say right. when you speak against them. But I'm not speaking against them. I'm speaking to let them know to become more self-aware because what is going on in our community between black men and black women is not okay. There's too many fatherless kids. There's too many motherless kids. It's not just black men. It's black women, too. There's a problem overall. And we're never going to get nowhere if nobody becomes self-aware and stop, you know, doing the things that they're doing. What is having these kids and them not being raised correctly going to do for our society? They don't have a chance. Yeah, it's hard. Like position. we said earlier, right? A lot of people are stuck, not because they want to be, but because systematically they are. So what are they supposed to do? They don't have a chance. Mm -mm. They're doing from the start. And that cycle just repeats itself. Create it is, it's repeating, repeating, repeating. Mm -hmm. At some point, we got, we got to, we got to break it, you know? At some point, we but how break it. nobody wants to become self aware enough to break it, they just live with blind eyes, put mm -hmm. the put the shades on here for a short time. It's, it's whatever, time. I got a, I got a <laughs> fresh new pair of white Air Force Ones. I'm stepping out, mm -hmm. like, come on, mm -hmm. like, what's going on, y'all? Yeah. Like, we can't do this, we, we can't do this. If they said, you know what attention to all my races if we go into segregation right now you have to survive on what your people have what we gonna have we gonna have jordans can we eat jordans we don't have we, gonna have, we, we don't have make chain we ain't got <laughs> we ain't got no gas stations we ain't got no grocery stores we ain't got none of the sufficient things that we need to survive nope. why is that nope but, i think um somebody said in the interview you know it's 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 a couple of things that you need to have a you know to actually run a society, you gotta have a grocery store, you gotta have a school system, you gotta have banks. Right. And we don't have, and, and there's no neighborhood, no community in America that has all three that are black owned. And I think that's what, you know, if we don't have those things that, that we're able to sustain, we, we, we can't sustain ourselves. Right. We will fail. And why do you think that's a thing? Why do you think there's no city? Say it again, so I don't say it wrong. Yeah, there's no no city, no community that has a you know a black owned bank, black owned grocery store, or um, you know a black school that's all in the same and a black hospital. I for, I forgot to mention that because you gotta have a way, you know, to take care take of take care of everybody. Yeah. So and there's no community that has that because I and it's I, I do think it's a combination of things. Like I said earlier, one we've you know, we've known struggle. That's all we have known right. our struggle. Yeah. And then, um, two, like I said earlier, too, those communities that they're halfway had that stuff, they're gone. Right. They're not. They're not they around. Don't exist. Yeah. Like the place that I mentioned in Charlotte, the place that 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 the arena is now with the Panthers mm -hmm, play, mm -hmm. that actually was a black hospital that was built in like the eighteen hundreds by what? by a church. It was a black hospital. Um, that you know took in black patients, and that's I what they did. I never knew that. See, exactly. And you won't know it because how it's would no I know that? There. Yeah, it's and no they're not going to teach you that it was there because they don't want you to know that you came from right. excellence. Right. And the only thing I think that's there now, they have that. You know how they have the little historical, uh, the little signs that they have, like you know right. this. This used to be this. this oh, yeah, that. but it don't matter if nobody knows about it. Right. Ain't nobody going to stop and just be reading these signs on your way to the Panthers game. Who? We're going to go see. Well, we've been pre-gaming. Right. Everybody loves football. Shout out to football, though. The best time of the year is back. I am an Auburn fan. I know Auburn. we suck. But <laughs> For lack of better words. <laughs> but it shows that we are loyal. <laughs> 
And yeah. we love our team, War Eagles. Mm-hmm. And you know that, and you know, I'm glad you did bring up football too, because um, you know that's that that what I do in my spare time. Man, my spare time, I watch a lot of documentaries. Okay. Um, and I just recently saw one to where um, this guy actually from he's actually from Athens. Um, oh. guy, guy by the name of Homer Homer Jordan. Homer Jordan. Yeah, he okay. went to Clemson. Clemson. Okay. Uh, and the, the his whole thing was everybody asked him. How did how did you get out of Athens? Mm. You know, you come from see the shows where you a a powerhouse player. You know, right. you, you were um, highly recruited. Right. But he went to Clemson because UGA wouldn't allow him to play quarterback. Mm. At that time, there wasn't a lot of black quarterbacks in the league. What? Yeah. So I mean, and, but if you think about it, you know, it made sense. You know, yeah, the, the do, quarterback but... is the face of the football team. Yeah. Who mm. and we in we in the south? It's the SEC, you right? Know? Yeah. Who? What team is going to have a black quarterback as the face of, of their, their, of their organization? And it's still prevalent to this day, to where a lot of coaches don't get the opportunity. A lot of black coaches don't get the opportunity. I just had a phone uh, conversation about this earlier with one of my friends that a lot of black people are qualified. Mm-hmm. To be in those positions, right, and they don't get those opportunities, right. Um, you know, it's more about. I think someone said it's more about who the owner or who the you know the school is more comfortable around. Mm. You know, that's who those that's that those are the type of people to get those positions because mm-hmm. they're more comfortable around their own people than they would be you know around us, right. Which kind of speaks into the fact that you know. We got to break into that ownership. Mm-hmm. You know, football, we have to break into that ownership. We, we do. broke into it in basketball, but football, you know, they got to break into it. But when you look at the teams, as, you know, I'm just throwing a number out there, you know, 80% African American. Why are there no. Why are there no owners? Why are there no. Why are there no black owners? No black coaches. You know, you got. I, you, well, we you got probably, one. He for the um, Steelers, right? Yeah, he probably the longest. You know, and the only one, he the only one. I don't, I'm not not gonna say he's the only one, but I can guarantee we can probably count on our hand how many it is. I just know him off rip because yeah. he been here a long time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah he been there a long time, but we could probably count off our head. It's three. three. It's only three. It's only three head. Uh, three black coaches. That's terrible. Yeah, for for like I said. A organization that's you know eighty five ninety percent black, and they take our kids and they train our kids and they do all this. Not saying not to do it, right? But they put they train majority of our kids for basketball and football, track, just sports in general. But what did J. Cole say? There's only sixteen spots on the Pistons. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So what are these kids doing right they're dedicating this is just reality Mm -hmm. they're dedicating their whole lives to football dedicating their whole lives to basketball but like he says 16 spots so you got all these kids in america and that's all they know so then you have these kids going to play in college because i'm not gonna lie it's easy to go to college and play football you can go play at a juco if you Mm -hmm. know what's really going on you Mm -hmm. know what i'm saying so it's easy to do that but to get to the NFL, which is a lot of these kids' dreams, is like one in what? Mm-hmm. And then if that's all they know, when they don't get it, now you have all these kids and they're lost and they work in these dead-end jobs. Because not only can you teach your kids about sport, yes, if they love football, let them play. Mm-hmm. But teach them other things. Yeah. Teach them to figure out what else they learn and love and things like that. I've met, I know football players right now who went to do that. And they didn't know what they wanted to do. They're depressed. They're mm-hmm. sad because that's my dream. That's my everything. How yep. did I not get it? Then they start feeling like they're not good enough because they mm-hmm. spent their whole life dedicated to it. Mm-hmm. We got to teach our kids about different things. It's not just about football. We all love football, but it's not just about that. Yep, yep. I I do think that's one of our flaws, you know, in the black community because a lot of times that's all that we push. Right. We think, that, you know, again, that was a, that's like one of the only ways to be successful, you know. Right. Entertainment, uh, you know, athletics, selling drugs, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but at the same time, <clears throat> at the same time, that's what we see, you know. Right. Like I said, coming from small towns, 
you know, I I knew I knew people that were selling drugs and they had the nice cars, you know what I'm saying? They had all the girls. Right. And we get to see the athletes and entertainment and the entertainers on TV. And that's what they got too. Right. So, you know, that's what that's what our our image of success becomes because right. that's what we see. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like I said, I didn't see you know people and I didn't see black people in high positions until I left and went to Atlanta. So do you feel like, you know, this is just hypothetically, being young and being able to see black leaders and black excellence like that, do you think it would have made an impact of where you are today? Of course, because, you know, you listen to people with money. Right. You know, you, what, what can a broke person tell yeah, you? Not how, nothing. How to be broke. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You're not yeah. going to listen to, if I know, if, yeah. if if I know I got more money than Joe Blow, you know, I ain't worried about what Joe talking about. You know what I'm saying? I, I got more money than Joe. I work at Balo. You feel me? I work at, Wal- I work at Walmart. You know what I'm saying? You know, so nah, I'm going to listen to somebody that, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, he got, man, this dude, he just put out, you know what I'm saying, 10000 You know what I'm saying? 20000 right. That's a lot of money. That's to, a lot of money. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? To a kid to that a, don't know no better. Mm-hmm. And he just put it out his pocket. So right. in but, my mind, I don't know where he got at the house. <laughs> you know there has always been black excellence. Mm-hmm. They're just not showing it to they you. They're going to show you the music videos, the right. cars, the chains, right. basketball, football, like we've right. been saying. But they show you those things because they're not going to show you that black women really built the spaceship to go to the mm-hmm. moon. GPS system. You know what I'm saying? Street lights. Or they're not going to tell you that a lot of these inventions were invented by black people. They just didn't have the money to patent it. Right. Or they they wouldn't, they didn't know about the patent. And they came through and somebody patented it before they had the opportunity. Before they had the opportunity. So if they're mm-hmm. stripping your knowledge before you even, mm-hmm. if you don't even know about the patent. It could even go deeper because I, I can remember, like I said, shout out TikTok again. I can remember seeing something to where at one point black people couldn't even get a patent. You had to go through you know what I'm saying? A white person to even to get even a pass on your invention. And, you know, you would hope that they would even, you know what I'm saying? Hope. Give you give you what, what your, your uh, you know, your dividends from it. Oh, yeah. Because I, they, if, if, you know, depending on, it's a dirty game. They, they may not, not even give it to you. They was not nah. giving our people what they deserve. They no. was taking. Yeah, if they was anything. taking their ideas. Mm-hmm. They was turning it into their own because of the fact that they did have the money to do everything that was necessary. They robbed our people, but that's why our people need to get it together and get the knowledge right now. Because like we said earlier, there is no excuse. It's infinite. It's everywhere. Right. What's an excuse now? Right. We can't use that no more. Is it pivotal and does it, you know, is it in our DNA and is it in us? Yes, it is. But at this point, it's no excuse. Right. It's time for a change. Right. Either you're going to put up or shut up. Ain't that what they said? Yeah. And roll bounce or yep, something like that? Yep, yep. <laughs> and we can't, we got to stop trying to look the part and actually play the part. Right. You know, a lot of times people, we associate, you know, the things we wear and the, materialistic items we associate that with success and people will like i said man the interview that i saw it went so deep to where the guy was saying you know black people bought twice as many mercedes or they bought like 80 percent of the mercedes sales they were like 80 percent of the mercedes sales for the past year Mm. when you know other races were making twice as much as we made so we were actually going out to buy these things that we didn't really, we couldn't even really afford. afford. But it's because it's a status symbol, mm. and so that's what I, that's what I mean by when I say we got to stop trying to look the part and actually play the part. Because status don't matter at the end of the day. No, those cars, all that materialistic stuff, it ain't gonna do nothing for you. It ain't nothing. gonna bring no happiness. It's gonna you driving a Mercedes is gonna bring you a bill. Hey. Depreciating value. Okay. <laughs> That's all it is. Once you drive off the lot, it, it ain't worth nothing. <laughs> nothing. But they want you to get those things because they want you to spend your money. Right. They don't want you to save and get your right. kids these IRA accounts that I was talking about earlier. Mm-hmm. They don't want you to do that. They want you to buy the cars, the chains, the money, mm-hmm. like the drugs. Like mm-hmm. they want you to blow it. Yep. I think we spent, I think, I think the study said we spent like $2 billion as a black community last year. And that's just 
ridiculous. On at what? Least, oh, exactly. On, on what? what? On what? Seafood bull. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. Seafood how? Bull. How is there not? I know they was hitting on these PP lo- PPP loans mm-hmm. or whatever. How did y'all not flip that? Yep. Yep. I mean, you know, just think about if we as a black people, we all just said, you know, we just found a, if if we could just, you know, start somebody started a bank or whatever. And we as black people, we just said, okay, we're going to just take out $2 of our paycheck and we're going to put it into the bank. You know what I'm saying? At, at that point, man, you think about it, in a year. Right. That's like a billion, you know what I'm saying? Easy, Easy off the rip. That we could use to help, you know what I'm saying, help other Find black our people community. Out. Right. But see, it'll be people that'll be like, oh, I don't trust them. You know what I'm saying? I don't know what they're going to do with my $2 for real. $2. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but it's people like yeah. that. You know, because we don't, at some point, at some point along the way, we lost trust within each other. Because they're so used to people taking from them. Getting because the yep. you think somebody wanted to steal money from their mom or were right. they pressured because of what society says that we need in order to make it. Right. You can't even get food as a homeless person unless you got $2. Mm-hmm. You can't even get a job because you have an address to put down in your job application. Right. And, which is crazy when people people see homeless people with their size, they be like, oh, just give them a job application. They're not even going to be able to get a job because they don't have an address. They don't even have the tools to take a shower to even get ready for a job interview. You can't go on a job interview like that. Right, right, right. And it's, it's, but that's just, you know, that's just how we are as a people. That's not okay. That's what's wrong. Everybody say, that's just what it is. That's just how we are. But nobody's bringing awareness to it. We're going to bring awareness to everything else. Celebrities, who's who, who, mm-hmm. who doing this, yep, whatever. Yep, but you can't yep. bring awareness to the things that are necessary. Right. But that's what we try to do here on the Q-tip. Q-tip. <laughs> Why you choose that name? You already said that on the podcast? I did. Um, I'm about to interview you now. No, no, no. We Look, gonna do he that. said no. We're going to do that. I'm going to say my interview. Actually, I'm going to say my, and I, you know, most people that do an introduction. Uh, when they get started, but you know I'm different, okay. so I do my introduction at, at the, the end. end. Right. And why you choose to do that? Uh, because I'm going to actually turn into a documentary, <gasps> so I'm going Ooh. to go through and you know showcase my life, where I come from, you know what made me the person I am today. Okay, so that's going to be mine. So you know, stay tuned to the end. Yeah, uh, you know, you'll get a good, you know, good documentary out of it. That's going to be good. Yeah. That's exciting. That's new. That's fresh. I can't wait to see that. That's pretty cool. It. I appreciate have it. you started? I have. Okay. I have. I have. You know, we're going into some different avenues. Like I said, this year is going to be filled with a lot of different and new things that we're going to be trying out as a, you know, organization. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, just going to be a lot in store. This is just, you know, one of those things that we started on. I know it's a positive thing. I know it's going to be something that we're going to stick with. Yeah, um, as you definitely going to be more to come. This is dope. Like, I'm really proud of you. You came a long way. I appreciate it. You came it. a long way. That just shows you. We've known each other for years, but I haven't seen him in years. But from then until now, it just shows you can really do anything. If right. you stay down, you just stay focused and just be yourself and create mm-hmm. ideas like this. Like, it's right. dope. Like, yeah. Right. And that's and, and you know, that's why I kinda did that's that what kinda drove me to do the podcast. So, you know, people like me and people uh, you know, not like me too, could see other people that are going through the stuff that we go through. Right. Or, you know, headed to the direction that we want to head right. to. Right. So, you know, they can say, Hey, if they do it, you know, maybe I can do it too. Or if yeah. they try it out, then maybe I can try it, you know. Inspiration does a lot. It does, man. Like I said, people believe what they see. Yeah. You know, so if I can see, if I can show somebody that, you know, hey, so you got to put in work, man. You can do it too. I'm not perfect. You know, I'm learning as I go. And that's what people, that that's what people do, you know. Right. Any, any successful person will tell you, you know, they're still, they're still learning as they're mm-hmm. going too. 
You got to remain coachable. You got to remain teachable. Yeah, a student and open-minded. Right, You right. have to be open-minded, y'all. Like, that is the only way that you will learn different things. Everybody's not going to agree with you, and you shouldn't agree with everybody. That's the beauty of it all. Mm -hmm. So remain open-minded so other people can penetrate you and give you knowledge to do things and create things for yourself and right. your future. Right, right. So, but yeah, um, you know, like I said, I appreciate you coming out. Yeah. Go ahead and tell them, you know, tell me social media, shout okay. out your business again so they can follow you. So my business is called Be Unapologetically You LLC on social media. That is underscore Be Unapologetically You. My personal page, this is long, y'all, is <laughs> N-A-T-A-L-I-I-I-6-E's. And an underscore. I don't know how I came up with that, but <laughs> yes. Yeah. So my website is www.beunapologeticallyyou.org. So that's how y'all can find me. I just want to thank you for allowing me to come on your show and do this interview. It's my first interview ever. Yeah. <laughs> I was nervous. Okay. I don't ever do this, but I am thankful that I did this. It brought me new opportunities, new knowledge. So right. thank you for that. Ain't no problem at all. And like I said, I'll, I'll make sure that I put, you know, all these links in my description. I got you. So you just check out the description. I have the links to everything that she mentioned today. Like I said, man, catch us on the next episode. All Peace. Right.